Hey everybody, back with the Necromancer uh, tank build this time around. I did make a uh, main and off tank build, pretty basic one a while back ago when the classes first came out. And this is how I'm running it now. Uh, many of you know that I love the Necromancer class in general. I uh, made a build for a Magicka Necromancer and a Necro Necromancer healer. If you want to check that out, it's on this channel. So here we go with the uh, tank build that I'm running right now for most cases. Obviously with tanks it's just like with healers, you always gotta sort of wear the sets that are necessary for your group if you're in trial situation uh, and what you need first, uh, but this is pretty much what I run in all normal trials, in all dungeons, veteran dungeons, and uh, it works very very well. So let's quickly get into the character sheet here. We'll quickly buff up. We've got a magic pool of 9,500, our health is at 47k, max stamina at 17k, and magicka recovery is really high at uh, 2,300. And then we've got around 1,000 stamina recovery. You just saw that drop there because our spirit mender died, which gives us a uh, higher recovery, but we want to keep that one up at all times anyway. Our f spell and physical resistances are at around 24k-ish. But that also goes up with another one of our buff skills, the Bone Armor, uh, or Beckoning Armor from the uh, tanking skill line of the Necromancer. Now, the food you're running really depends on your playstyle. And uh, let me quickly get into that too. Right. This is uh, the resistances with the Bone Armor, by the way. They go up to 2,900, which is way enough. I know the cap is 33, but you don't really need to hit resistance cap with everything. I think it's pretty much a myth that you need to have 33k cap. Uh, I think everything between like 26, 20, 26 to 30 is perfectly fine. Because you're gonna, if you're doing the harder content, you're gonna like uh, adjust your CP and resistances anyway to the uh, trial that you're trying to do on veteran or hard mode or stuff. So this is perfectly fine for everything, veteran dungeons or or normal trials, or even the Craglorn veteran trials, or the easier veteran trials like uh, Asylum Sanctorium without the hard modes and all. So, uh, the food you're running, as I said, is really up to your playstyle. This is the one with a small magic pool, just around 10k-ish, just short of 10k, but a big recovery with all our buffs on of 2300. And this is for you if you prefer the safe tanking style. If you just want to run around, use like your agony totem, this, and then just uh, taunt things with the sword, stab them, bring them together, keep your uh, spirit mender and bone armor up and all. You can run the flat food then, the blue one, which is what gives us our stat right now. Just a random max health, max stamina food. Uh, I personally like to spend a little more time on the back bar and do a little more things with my Magicka skills. So I prefer to run the uh, Tristead food, in this case the Bewitched Sugar Skulls, which give a little bit of health recovery as well. Uh, they also give you max health, max stamina, and max Magicka. So if I'm putting that on uh, and buff up, We've got a little bit more. We've got around 14k Magicka pool, 46k our health went down 1k and a 16k stamina pool with the same Magicka recovery and stamina recovery. So I personally prefer that food even though the max stamina pool with 16k might seem a little bit low for some but I can deal with it very well. And that's because I, except for like when I'm tanking bosses, I love to just run around on the back bar and use the far taunt on everything which costs magicka and drains magicka easily and then the beckoning armor just to pull everything in but to do so I prefer having the 14k magicka pool and not just the uh, 9.5k but either way that's up to you, you can just try it out and see what's good for you, what works for you run a couple dungeons and you'll notice quite quickly so we're gonna go into the skills first up is the spiked bone shield, this comes from the undaunted skill line it's the uh, fourth thing you unlock. 
starts out as bone shield and will morph it to spiked bone shield. Surround yourself with a whirlwind of bones, gaining a damage shield that absorbs up to 14k damage over 6 seconds and returns 65% of the damage uh, absorbed back to the enemy. This ability scales off your max health. Also, you give your allies a synergy called the Bone Wall Synergy, uh, granting an ally and up to 5 other allies a damage shield up uh, to an equal of 30% of their max health. So, as you notice already with our first ability, Necromancers should have a high health pool. I wouldn't run around with a 35k Necromancer tank, uh, 35k healthish, because a lot of their abilities and passives play into their maximum health pool. So does this shield here, and a couple of other skills and passives. That is why we want to have the 46, 47k-ish uh, high health pool. Just It makes all of our skills stronger, and we want to work with that. So next up is the Hungry Scythe, that's from the Bone Tyrant skill line. It uh, starts out as Death Scythe, first thing, first thing you unlock, uh, morph it to Hungry Scythe. And what it does is you slice into an enemy dealing 2000 magic damage, but mostly this is our burst heal. You heal for 7k health for the first enemy hit and an additional 2300 uh, for each additional enemy hit up to 5 times. And after dealing damage, you heal for 1k uh, health every 1 second over 5 seconds. This healing ability also scales off of your max health, which is again why, Necromancer, we really want to be over the 45k mark with our health going close to 50k. -ish. The Bone Shield, by the way, looks like this. It's a spiked shield. If you get hit now, you uh, hit back with some of the damage you absorbed. And the Scythe just looks like that and it's a really big burst heal. Usually when my health drops down to around 30k-ish, 25k-ish, I just need to do one or two of these sides to be completely full back up to 46k health. Next up, from the living death skill line, the healing skill line, is the spirit mender, or, or spirit guardian. It starts out as spirit mender and then you morph it to spirit guardian. And what this does is you summon a ghostly spirit to be by your side for 16 seconds. The spirit heals you or lowest health eye around you every 2 seconds for uh, 1800 health. And while active, 10% of the damage you take is transferred to the spirit mender. Also it creates a corpse on death, which is good for one of our other skills. Now while we have this, it's a nice heal and uh, it's Good to have it on the front bar, your main tanking bar when you're tanking bosses, just because 10% of all the damage you take is transferred to the Spirit Mender instead. Looks like this, you just summon this little ghost guy. And then when you fight a boss and you block 10% of the damage the boss does to you, goes over to him. Which is why you want to always keep him up. Even when you're not fighting bosses, by the way, because your magic uh, recovery is increased while he's active, but I'll tell you about that in the passives. Okay, next up we'll go into the one hand and shield skill line, because in the main bar we're playing a sword and a shield. And there we've got pierce armor, this is our main taunt. You uh, thrust your weapon into an enemy, dealing a little bit of physical damage and taunting them for 15 seconds. And you also uh, put major fracture and major breach on the enemy, increasing, uh, reducing their physical and spell resistance by 5k for 15 seconds. So this is taunt and debuff. It's really simple, works like this. You just run up to an enemy, stab him, and then you can see the buffs up there underneath the name. That's uh, the uh, major fracture, major breach, and the taunt. The taunt is the little shield on the right side. So it runs out after 15 seconds. You s also see the flames above the head of the guy. That means he's taunted and he'll only attack you now. And then you just reapply it every 13 or 14 seconds will just before it runs out. Just make sure you're on the safe side because the main thing as a tank is really to keep up the taunt and a lot of people fail with that and get their group killed. Next up also from the uh, one hand and shield skill line is the heroic slash. This deals about 1900 uh, physical damage and afflicts the uh, enemy with minor maim reducing their damage done by 15% for 12 seconds. Also you gain minor heroism, granting you one ultimate every uh, 1.5 seconds for 12 seconds. Looks just like this, you just hit the guy with a low slash, heroic slash it's called, 
and then you can see the other debuff up there, the minor maim. So best case scenario, you want to taunt, low slash, and have all of the debuffs running at the same time. The ultimate, the minor heroism, uh, is very important to the build in total because necromancers have great ultimate regeneration and this build is focused on being a great tank but at the same time being able to spam colossuses and warhorns like shit like seriously about every 30 seconds or so brings us to our ultimate the glacial colossus it's from the gravelord skill line you summon a big uh, flesh colossus who sm smashes the ground three times Dealing 3,900 frost damage with ease smash and stuns the enemies with the final hit for 4 seconds, but more importantly, dealing damage applies major vulnerability. And necromancers are, if I'm correct, the only uh, race in the or the only class in the game who can actually bring major vulnerability to the table for 8 seconds there, uh, because it increases the damage taken by 30%, but the damage from all kinds of sources. So every 20 seconds basically if your ultimate was full that fast you could put that colossus on a boss and for eight seconds always increase the damage all the damage they take by 30 percent and 30 percent is quite a lot so if you're in a trial group and your war horns are covered your healers got and and main tank have the war horns covered you can just spam that colossus on the boss every 30 seconds and pretty much a third at a time or a fourth at the time of the whole fight he'll always take 30% more damage so uh, yeah this is what we're playing on our front bar alright let's get to the back bar as you can see we're playing a staff here first up is wall of elements or as it's here called blockade of frost this comes from the uh, destruction staff skill line it's the second thing you unlock starts out as wall of elements morph it to elemental blockade because we want to have the longer uptime the reason we're doing this is because we're creating a field of ice which does a little bit of damage but also reduces the enemy movement speed and immobilizes and uh, and chilled enemies so blockade of storms if you were using a lightning stuff could set people uh, concussed and off balance and the blockade of frost is pretty good for crowd control because it just reduces the enemy's movement speeds and it plays in well with our other skills. It looks just like this, you're slamming the staff down and doing this big blockade of frost and everything inside of it can get uh, chilled and immobilized but also takes a little bit of damage. But mostly what this is there for is because of the enchantment on our staff which is going to be a crusher one meaning everything in that blockade will have their uh, physical and spell resistances reduced even more. We'll get to that later though. Next up is Necrotic Potency. This comes from the um, Bone Tyrant Tanking skill line. It's the third thing you unlock. I morphed it to Necrotic Potency. The other morph, Dead and Pain, is also pretty good because it grants you a little bit more uh, damage resistances, I think. But Necrotic Potency, that morph in particular, grants you more ultimate for uh, more ultimate and healing for any corpse you consume with it. So the way this works is we'll quickly put our bone armor and our spirit mender up and wait for them to die. Which should take about 16 seconds. Five more. So now you've got a corpse on the ground. And now you can consume that corpse and that one with necrotic potency and gain ultimate for doing so. So furthermore, uh, this um, this really helps our ultimate uh, gen uh, generation as well because in big ad pools, you got like ten dead ads around you. You can just spam necrotic potency and uh, consume all the corpses and uh, get six ultimate for every corpse you consume there, which is really nice. Next up is the beckoning armor. You've already seen that one. This is uh your your own armor your necromancer armor which grants you major resolve increasing your physical resistance and spell resistance for 5k this is how we get to the almost capped out resistant values of just uh, under 30k and uh, while active enemies that strike you with ranged attacks will be pulled towards you for three seconds and also it creates a corpse when the effect completes which plays well with necrotic potency so this is this armor here 
just uh, giving you a higher physical and spell resistance. But then also, if somebody ranged attacks you, like if you put the armor up and then fart on an enemy that's far away, he'll attack you and get pulled in by a chain. So this is how you manage your crowd control. The enemies that will melee attack you will come to you anyway if you taunt them, but the things like mages with staffs or archers uh, that are further off away, you just put the armor up, taunt them with a far taunt or with a heavy attack from an ice staff, for example, and just wait for, uh, wait for them to attack and then they'll just immediately get pulled in towards you. Next up is another crowd control skin uh, skill. This is the Agony Totem from the Bone Tyrant skill item. What this actually does is really cool because it gives uh, minor protection to everybody inside of it. It's like a circle area effect, the totem is. Uh, and all of your allies will get minor protection. You will get minor protection, reducing damage taken by 8%. Also, after 2 seconds, the totem begins fearing nearby enemies for 2 seconds, causing them to cower in place for 4 seconds. And then you offer the group another synergy as well, the pure agony one which deals magic damage and applies minor vulnerability to the enemies. So you can use this either in boss fights as a, f a source of protection, an AoE field, you can stand inside to have more protection. And if you're encountering a bunch of trash mobs, you can also use it as your CC, like the Dragon Knight's claws from the ground, uh, the talons for example. You, the only thing you have to uh, remember is that you have to time it a little bit because the fear will only set in after two seconds and not straight away. So if this is a bunch of ads that are running towards you, uh, you just let them get a little bit closer, maybe put down your blockade first, and then put your bone totem down. And inside of this circle, everybody is going to be protected, and all these enemies that are inside of the circle will get feared after two seconds and that means they won't move, they will just stand in place for 4 seconds and do nothing. Which is a very nice way to execute, uh, execute a good crowd control as a necromancer. I'll show you that in a video with a little bit of gameplay, but that's usually how I do it. If I see trash mobs coming on, I just uh, put the blockade down to slow them down a little bit, which gives me more time. Put the totem up to fear them in place, so then their best case scenario immobilized, feared, chilled, they have their uh, resistances reduced because of the crusher enchant on the ice stuff. And then I can just pop my bone armor if I haven't already got it on and just far taunt other things into the ad pool which will just be pulled in by the chain. So the ad control is actually really good on a necromancer tank. Alright, last skill. I've been mentioning it a couple of times already. It's the far taunt um, from the undaunted skill line as well. The third thing you unlock in a rage starts as inner fire but inner rage all it does is ignite the fire of hate in an en enemy's heart dealing a little bit of magic damage and taunting them to attack you for 15 seconds a uh, ranged ally targeting the taunted enemy can activate the radiate synergy so there's another synergy that we're given to the group that would be the third one yeah we've got one with the spike bone shield one with the Agony Totem and one with Inner Rage. Synergies are always great for all kinds of groups. And yeah, this is pretty much just your Fart Taunt. It also lasts for 15 seconds. Just like this, enemies taunted. Pretty much like the Sword Poke, only the Sword Poke also gives you a major fracture and major breach. So this is how you uh, grab enemies from afar. Just put your bone armor up, put the Fart Taunt on them, and as soon as they attack you, they will get pulled in to the pool where you can CC them with your blockade and your acne totem and everything. Now, quickly for the last skill, this is obviously the aggressive warhorn. <coughs> Sound a warhorn to uh, rally your forces, which increases everyone's uh, max magicka and stamina by 10% for 30 seconds in your group, and also you and your allies gain major force, increasing all the critical damage by 15 seconds for 10 seconds. So which ultimate you're about to use to boost the group's damage, whether you want to use the Colossus to put the major vulnerability on the boss, or whether you want to use the aggressive Warhorn to give everyone in the group, uh, in the group more critical damage, is pretty much up to the group. If you're in a trial group with two healers and a tank who all have Warhorn and don't need their other ultimates and just are able to spam that, 
You might as well go with the Colossus, but if there's a couple other necromancers in the group who can have a good uptime on the Colossus, you might as well go with the Warhorn. Either way, you've got one strong ultimate which either uh, makes the boss a lot more vulnerable or boosts the whole group. So, so much for that. Now, before we get into... Uh, it's actually tied in with the optional skill, so I'll just try and explain it all together. As a necromancer tank, if you're uh, getting comfortable with it, you might actually not necessarily need pierce armor on the front bar. But so there's a couple things you can swap around in terms of how you want to taunt the enemies. Like if you're not much of a fan of using the far taunt, even though I would advise you to, because as I said, it's the easiest way of pulling ads in as a necromancer since you don't have chains. Um, you might not need it if you're playing an ice stuff on the back bar because a heavy attack from an ice stuff, as it says in the passives of the destruction stuff, fully charged frost stuff, heavy attacks taunt the enemy to attack you for 15 seconds and grant you a damage shield. So, instead of using this far taunt here, the inner rage one, which taunts something for 15 seconds. I can also just heavy attack them with my ice stuff and gain a taunt for 15 seconds, which is pretty much the same thing. The ice stuff heavy attack is a little bit slower, but I get a damage shield with it. So if you're comfortable with doing that, then you might just drop the inner rage taunt and just use ice stuff heavy attacks. On the other way, if you do like the far taunting better and you want quick far taunts like the inner rage one, you might not even need this taunt here because all this does, except for taunting, is uh, afflicting the enemy with major breach and major fracture. But we have an AoE skill for that as a necromancer, really, and that will be the unnerving boneyard. The unnerving boneyard, let's quickly put that here, is like an AoE damage field that you put up on a group. And while they're inside of it, they gain frost damage over 10 seconds and also gain uh, major breach and fracture. So they're pretty much the exact same thing, reducing their uh, physical and spell resistance. And you'd offer the group another synergy called the Grave Robber synergy. So you don't necessarily need to use the the, uh, the usual taunt that every tank uses, Pierce Armor here. You can also just use the far taunts, like Inner Rage, Ice Stuff, Heavy Attacks. And then for the major fracture, major breach, just use the boneyard. This is especially nice in situations with lots of ads because where it would be really hard if you have 20 ads coming on to poke them all with the sword to give them major breach and major fracture debuffs, you might as well just uh, s like pull them into your boneyard and have a whole field where everybody that's inside of it can uh, get major fracture and major breach. And then you could also put the agony totem on top to fear them inside of here and just have them inside of here and then put your wall of elements below it to give them all the uh, physical and spell resistance debuffs as well from the crusher enchantment so th that is one way you could go about things oh, okay I need to quickly wait until they're aggroed before I can go on come on guys ease up so that will be an optional skill here the unnerving boneyard comes from the gravelord skill line as well uh, another thing that we have here if you need a little bit more resource management and damage mitigation you can drop the necrotic potency which sucks up ultimate from corpses for expungent modify this comes from the living death skill line and what this does is embrace the power of death removing up to two negative effects on you and restoring 500 magic and stamina for each negative effect removed while slotted the cost of all your abilities is reduced by three percent which is very nice because on the back bar the blockade of frost is almost 5k magicka and the agony totem is almost 4k magicka so that helps quite a bit with uh, these two aoe skills that we're running and their cost makes you have everything a little uh, less magic uh, expensive. And then also the really nice thing is as a tank you're gonna have negative effects on you a lot because you're just gonna taunt things and you're gonna get, I don't know what, poison debuffed by all kinds of uh, adds or, or bosses. 
So you can just use that, and every time you use it and restore an effect, you gain 500 Magicka and Stamina back. So this is pretty good for your own resource management, as well as uh, for the cost reduction, as well as to remove negative effects if you need to. So this is definitely an option for your back bar as well. Very cool skill. I'll just put the other one back on so I remember what I'm doing. Alright then, obviously the Living Death Ultimate, Renewing Animation, bring your allies back from the brink of death, resurrecting them uh, at a target location. This is like a big AoE res and you restore 5300 magic and stamina for each ally you attempt to resurrect. Doesn't even have to go through or be taken on, just uh, for each one you attempt to. So this resurrects three players at once. Might be nice for uh, really hard dungeons where people usually die or if you're with a team that hasn't done a veteran dungeon before and you're pretty sure that the lasers for example in Frost Vault or something are gonna wipe one or two people and you want to bring them back really fast where you just don't want to push for damage with the Warhorn and the Colossus but more for survivability and safety you might as well go with the renewing animation one it's also very nice if you go into veteran asylum sanctorium for example with a new group because almost every new group or player who does that for the first time doesn't really realizes that the final boss jumps at 90 91 ish and uh 76 ish percent and there's always a lot of dead people so whatever is needed really as a tank you're just gonna play the ultimate that is needed for the content you want to get done if you know that there's gonna be deaths then use this if you know that you're gonna need more damage then use these it's really up to you another ultimate you could use is the shield wall from the uh, one-handed shield skill line reinforce your shield allowing you to automatically block all the attacks at no cost for five seconds and that'll go up too as you level the skill so this is pretty good if you're in fights where you need to block a lot and uh, your stamina gets drained really hard because then you can just pop that shield ultimate and in five seconds get like two heavy attacks in or maybe three to restore a lot of stamina another skill you could use is defensive posture from the one and skill skill line this is a damage shield that uh, also scales of uh, your max health and if you uh, morph it then to absorb missile it will absorb uh, I think mainly magic abilities so that shield kind of depends on what content you're running if there's a lot of incoming uh, projectiles that would fit the description of the morph then uh, you might as well use that instead of spike bone shield because it absorbs them and uh, I think uh, yeah let's quickly check that out actually uh, no, because I can't morph it either way. Alright, yeah. So much for that anyway. Like, this one, uh, I think it's mainly for Magicka. Projectiles, the Absorb Missile one. And, um, it absorbs, th absorbs them and, uh, gives you Magicka back, I think, if you morph it to the other thing. It's very rarely that I needed this skill, to be honest. It's only a couple of dungeons that I can think of where it was helpful, like the new veteran Lara Marcelloc and, uh, and I think Fanglair, hard, the final boss on Veteran, wasn't too bad there either. But yeah, so much for that. Alright, what else do we got? Four Shock, obviously. If you don't need to take care of Elemental Blockade. Uh, I prefer Blockade all the time because of the Crusher Enchant. But you can use uh, Force Shock and morph it to... What's it called? Destructive Shock or... The morph that interrupts anyway, because sometimes as a tank you need to take care of interrupting something. And uh, this is like a ranged interrupt, which can be very helpful in uh, certain scenarios. Alright, you've got Unstoppable. This is, uh, short, uh, this is a sort of immunity to knockback and disabling effects shield. So when you activate it, you also gain major, major resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance. But we also have that from our... Uh, from our bone armor, which is why I'm not running this on here. Uh, but this one grants you immunity to knockback and disabling effects. So if you were ever in a situation where you needed that, this might be a good uh, good trade-off just for a boss fight to go with Unstoppable instead of 
beckoning armor because both give you major resolve and this one also gives you immunity from knockbacks. Then again, there are also poisons or potions that do that. Uh, yeah, you've got essences of immovability, which also uh, make you immune to knockback and disabling effects and restore a bit of health. So, the choice really is yours, and there's very, very few situations where you actually need that. But if you want to like build a full all-round tank equipped for all sorts of scenarios, you might as well get the skill and level it up. All right, we've got Invigorating Drain. This is nice from the Vampire skill line because while you activate the drain, you stun an enemy, and also you generate four ultimate every one second for three seconds. So this is another thing that would help us uh, generate ultimate. I was originally going to put that on the build somehow, but all of the other skills that I've got on the build right now are kind of better in my opinion. <laughs> so yeah, it's an option, but I'd much rather prefer something like Heroic Slash because it also gives you minor heroism for more ultimate, but also puts minor maim on the enemy. <coughs> Another nice skill is Mist Form. This just uh, basically turns you into mist and reduces all the damage you take by 75% for 4 seconds and entering this form removes and grants immunity to all disabling and immobilization effects. So you cannot be healed and your magicka recovery is disabled while you're basically a cloud of mist but all your uh, damage taken is reduced by a huge amount, 75% and you can't be uh, immobilized so if you need to get out of something, an oh shit situation, it's a nice thing to have as a tank. Um, though most scenarios don't really use it. Like one thing you could use it on is maybe the final boss in Veteran Dragonstar Arena. If you've got these four side bosses on you and they're all bashing at you and you really need to get out of there and uh, over to the other side fast, that'd be a nice skill to use then. Okay, other than that I think we're pretty set with the skills that we're using. Sometimes you might want to use Purge or Barrier from the support skill line to cleanse yourself even though you already have a skill that uh, that removes negative effects. This one also remo removes negative effects from your group members. So this is something that would be nice, for example, if you're tanking bosses in uh, Halls of Fabrication, they set you on fire and put all sorts of debuffs on the group. Okay, there's so much for the optional skills. Then Now let's quickly get into the passives here. This will help you understand the build better. You can't skip that part. I'll put time timestamps uh, in the description of the video but this is actually gonna help you understand why we're using skills and what we're doing so you might want to watch it when your spirit mender dies the cost of your next spirit mender is reduced by 50 percent we've got the spirit mender in form of the spirit guardian on the bar so we definitely want that to reduce our costs even more increases your critical strike chance against enemies this is pretty much a dps uh, a dps execute bonus so we don't necessarily need it as a tank but since we're doing a little bit of damage if you got the skill points put them in if not just uh, leave this one out for now December when uh, Grave Lord ability is active your spell and physical penetration are increased by 1400 we don't really need that either as a tank the only Grave Lord ability we would technically use except for alternate could be the unnerving boneyard if you were gonna go without the uh, pierce armor stab taunt or the heroic slash but it's not really necessary there to have the passive. Rapid Rot increases your damage done over damage over with damage over time effects by 15%. Again, the Boneyard would be a damage over time effect. Uh, I think Agony Totem... No, it doesn't even do any damage. It just gives major protection. Yeah. And I guess the Blockade of Frost would be one, but... These are n skills that are not necessary. They're all nice boosts to do a little bit of damage as a tank if you want to, but the only thing you really need is this one. Bone Tyrant is a tanking skill line, so obviously you want all of these. With a Bone Tyrant ability slotted, whenever an enemy uh, in combat within you dies within 28 meters, you restore 200 magic and stamina. So 28 meters is pretty big circle, and then it just needs to die. You don't even need to have damaged it or d done anything with it. So this is definitely one of the best passives there. You really need to get that to keep your magicka and stamina. Disdain Harm, reduce damage taken from damage over time abilities by 15% while you have a Bone Tyrant ability active. So you definitely want that as well because 
we have the beckoning armor active at all times if you're good with keeping it, uh, keeping it up that is and the agony totem will be down a lot so definitely get that one as well health uh, avarious all right so increase your healing received by two percent for each bone tyrant ability slot so we got six percent on the back bar and two percent on the front bar so our healing received is always gonna get a little buff last grasp very important increase your max health by 1250 just for being a necromancer and so much ability scale of our max health we really want to have a high health pool so definitely get all of these passives in the living death skill line while you have a negative effect on you healing done is increased by a percent you should get that since tanks have a lot of uh, negative effects on them and our spirit mender heals us or, uh, or or a group member so it's definitely helpful near death experience while you have a living death ability slotted your critical strike chance with all healing abilities is increased by 20 percent uh not technically necessary but it can be helpful to uh get a little crit heal out of the scythe or whatever uh corpse consumption when you use an ability on a corpse you generate 10 ultimate this is very very important for the build because we are an ultimate generating machine as i will get into later and then while you have spirit mender up your magic and stamina recovery is increased by 200 very very important because we always have the spirit mender up and our magic and stamina recovery are always uh, increased by 200 which is quite a lot one hand and shield you want all of these because we are using one hand and shield as our main weapon destruction stuff you obviously want all of these as well I don't even have the last one yet because I've leveled it up I was trying to go with a bow before which worked out quite nicely actually but it's just an additional stamina drain whereas the uh, yeah the blockade is better to handle for me but you definitely want all of these as well you need them even if you want to taunt with the frost stuff or, and apply all the chilled and status effects and have a better chance of that so get all of these as well light armor you only need the first three increasing your uh, magicka recovery and your spell resistance medium armor you really only need wind walker for your stamina recovery and later on athletics for your movement speed and roll dodge cost these are the only two here and then heavy armor you want all of them definitely because you get a great bonus out of everything and we're using five pieces or more of heavy armor vampire you want supernatural recovery undeath and unnatural resistance blood ritual is only if you want to turn other people into vampires it's not necessary though savage feeding and dark stalker you don't really need as well so these are the three important ones fighters guild if you've got the skill points grab banish the wicked generate three ultimate when you kill an undead dead or a werewolf um as a tank uh, you're usually not the guy to get the last shot in before a, a enemy dies unless they die in one of your aoe's but either way if it happens you get three ultimate which is great so i definitely go for banish the wicked as well from the fighters guild Mages Guild, we got nothing. Undaunted, we do want all of these because we're using one light, one medium, and five heavy pieces. So definitely grind out uh, the Undaunted skill line, get to level 10, and then unlock all of the passives. So you get more uh, more max health, uh, stamina, and magicka by 3 or 6%, I think it is then. And when you activate a Syllogy, you also restore more resources. Assault and support, we don't really need anything. Now, Nord. This is where the ultimate regeneration begins in this build. Apart from having a lot of skills like Necrotic Potency, which give us ultimate back, or Heroic Slash, which gives us minor heroism, granting us a lot more ultimate, we are also a Nord. And Nords have... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? This one. Stalbart increases your max stamina by 1500 and whenever you take damage you gain five ultimate this can occur every 10 seconds and we're at the tank we're taking damage all the time so every 10 seconds you just get an extra free five ultimate also you have your uh, max health increased by a thousand and your cult resistance is increased and you're immune to the chilled status effect which is very nice 
and then your physical and spell resistance are generally just increased by 3900 so almost 4k which is how we get to around 29k max resistances with minimal effort so to speak not having to wear any sets really that boost our spell resistances also increases the duration of any consumed drink by 15 minutes pretty nice thing nice bonus on top of it you could go for alchemy because you will need to use potions now and then with this build uh, so if you could level that up to 50 and uh, get all the medicinal use thing to make all your potions last 30 percent longer you'd pretty much have 100 percent uptime on them i haven't been able to have the time to do that yet but it's definitely worth it as well yeah so much for the passives to the build now what probably everybody's waiting for let's quickly get into the sets On the front bar we've got the Akaviri Dragon Guard. And this plays very well with our being a necromancer generating ultimate in general, being a Nord generating ultimate while taking damage, having necrotic potency, sucking ultimate from corpses, and having a uh, heroic slash which gives us uh, minor heroism for ultimate. We are playing the Akaviri Dragon Guard set which adds even more magicka recovery which is very nice because a lot of our skills are magicka skills. Adds 4% healing taken, adds 1k max health, and reduces the cost of all of our ultimate abilities by 15%. So not only do we generate ultimate like crazy, but we also have increased, uh, reduced costs of our ultimate abilities by 15%, so they're all cheaper as well. So this is a great set for a necromancer really, especially a Nord necromancer with all the, uh, with all the ultimate reduction. And, uh... I would wear this even as a main tank. I'll definitely wear it as an off tank, but I'll, even as a main tank, this is probably the best front bar set you can get there. So we've got the sword <coughs> with a hardening enchant, granting us a little damage shield in case we need it, just for safety. And then the trait of the sword is decisive. When you gain ultimate, you have an 18% chance to gain one additional ultimate. So where we gain ultimate all the time because our uh, ultimate generation is crazy we gain an additional ultimate as well for just for the trait on the sword which is very nice the shield in reinforced or nernhond it makes a difference if you gold it out nernhond will be a little bit of a higher armor value but it's not the world so reinforced is totally fine if you can just buy one like that or uh, farm one like that and uh, with a health glyph on top of it you might wanna change this to a stamina glyph if you'd like to have a little bit more stamina with the tristead food that's your choice really uh, 881 health it's you're probably still gonna be over 45k health uh, altogether and you'd have a bit more stamina so on the shield you can go with whatever 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 glyph you you like really all right so the jewelry then is going to be all in healthy with magicka recovery glyphs that's very important that you get the uh, gold magicka recovery glyphs that gives you 169 magicka recovery because we'll definitely need that because our skills aren't cheap and we want to use them as much as we can uh, I prefer them in healthy here just because a lot of the necromancer skills scale off of max health but necros are also kind of slow so if you want to retrate one of them into swift to be a little faster on your feet Oh, uh, that's also an option. Okay, next set we've got here is Blood Spawn Monster set. With usually with the tanks I play, I prefer to play all heavy pieces just for the passives from the heavy armor skill line. But with a necro tank, <laughs> I kind of found that it's more comfortable to play with five medium, uh, five heavy, and then one medium and one light, which is going to be our monster set. So shoulders and light. And uh, and the head in light, uh, the head in medium. So blood spawn gives us an extra 124 stamina recovery, and whenever we take damage, we have a six percent chance to generate another 14 ultimate and increase our physical and spell resistances by 6,000. So we're definitely gonna go over cap with the resistances of this prox, but that's not too bad really. Uh, the main reason we're wearing this is the 6% uh, chance to generate 14 ultimate because 6% sounds low 
but we're the tank, we're taunting everything, we're taking damage from maybe like 10 or 20 ads around us. So, there, it, it, it does help quite a lot actually to wear this set. Now you want the helmet reinforced and the shoulders and sturdy. You generally want all of the big pieces, meaning chest, head and legs in reinforced and all the small pieces, meaning shoulders, waist, hands, feet in sturdy. You can also go with one infused and put a tri-stack glyph on it just to boost all of your base stats a little bit. But I just, yeah, it's really up to you. I prefer the reinforced three big pieces. Uh, infused is, is great too as well though. So, right on. Next set is Ebon. Simple as that. I was trying out a lot of sets, really, but it always comes down to if you want to play Akaviri Dragon Guard and Bloodspawn for the uh, for the ultimate regeneration, then you do need one set that gives you a bunch of health. And the obvious choices would be Ebon or Plague Doctor. And Ebon also uh, supports your whole group because you get 2k max health like that, then 4% healing taken. And then it increases the max health of all of you and 11 other group members, so your whole trial group really by almost another K. So, whereas Plague Doctor would have given me a little bit more health, just for me, this one really supports the whole group and it's been one of the best tanking sets forever in the game. So it was kind of an obvious choice to put that there. Alright, <sighs> did I forget anything? No, Sturdy Reinforced max health glyphs on all of the armor by the way we really want to be the make the most out of our max health so all of our skills get stronger and yeah the ice staff of the dragon i've gotten back bar with the crusher enchant reducing the targets uh, physical and spell resistance for five seconds and in infused just so that the amount uh, of which it's being reduced is higher you can obviously also use a uh, lightning stuff but i prefer the ice stuff on the necro just because I can actually go without any taunts on the bar and just run around with the ice stuff and taunt things with that if I wanted to. And uh, yeah, since the Boneyard does frost damage and the Elemental Blockade with the ice stuff does frost damage, that stacks quite nicely and allows you to immobilize and chill a lot of enemies, which is great for add control as well. But the choice is yours. You can also go with the lightning stuff of the dragon, but also an infused with a crusher enchant then. Okay. So now we're getting into optional sets. The main sets that I'm running around with on the Necro are Ebon and Yolnacrin. You can also add Plague Doctor, but I've got that on Sword and Board just because it's how I like it. The Yolnacrin set comes from Sunspire. It adds 1k max health, 1k max stamina, so your your health in, in total will go down a little bit because Ebon offers more health bonuses. But when you taunt an enemy, you give yourself and 11 group members minor courage for 15 seconds, increasing all their weapon and spell damage by 129. And this can occur every 8 seconds. So, if you're the main tank and you're taking care of all the taunting, you might want to wear this and then have the off tank wear Ebon instead. So you get all the bonuses, you get an extra 900, or if it's golded out, 1k health from the off tank and then you give everyone the um, minor courage to increase their weapon and spell damage. These are pretty much the body sets I run around with here and then I also have the Dragon Guard one as well as a body set because there is an option for pure off tanking where you don't have to take care of bosses or anything hard to tank really. That's the case very rarely but what I do like to use in Cloud Rest, uh, I'll show you later. Right, let's get into the other sets first here. Stonekeeper is one of the obvious choices, just because of its tri stat glyph, sort of. And then when you block, you gain a uh, stack. And when you gain six charges, you're releasing everything, restoring 5,000 stamina and magicka and healing for almost 6,000. So this is great for sustain if you have to block a lot, especially since our stamina pool isn't very, very high but if you have to fight a boss where you block a lot, then Stonekeepers is probably your best bet on there. Other than that, there's tons of great helmets for tanks. There's Lord Warden, even though I wouldn't wear that personally because our resistances are fine already. Uh, but if you want to give the group some more resistances, that's good. Then there's Vicosa. Uh, there's, you can even wear Earthcore sometimes. Tanks wear that. Then there's Torvacoons from... Uh, from uh, Fang there, I think it is. Yeah, so 
10 Kelmets, there's shitloads of great ones in the whole game. But the main ones you're gonna be wanting on this setup is either Stonekeeper for fights where you have to block a lot, or Bloodspawn for the ultimate regeneration. And then when you get into end game, you're gonna have to collect all of the good helmets that you could potentially need anyway. So, but this is what you start out with: Stonekeepers and Bloodspawn. All right, so Plague Doctor, obviously another great set. Just gives you a shitload of health, 1k max health, 1k max health, 4% healing taken, and then another almost 3k max health. So this is just if you want to go the real safe route, like if you're with a trial group and you don't really know what to expect, you might want to put that on. Another option would be Warrior Poet. This gives you increased armor values, so uh, two max health bonuses and then two armor value bonuses. And then you gain minor toughness at all times, increasing your max health by an extra 10%. So this plays well with your max health that you want to have to make all of your skills stronger and gives you a little bit more armor as well. Now, that's pretty much the main sets I would run on this. <coughs> I would always go with Dragon on the weapons and jewelry and then either Ebon or Yarlnacrins, whatever you need, as your buddy set. And then either Bloodspawn or Stonekeeper at least for all kinds of content that is like veteran Craglorn trials or normal Craglorn trials or DLC dungeons or veteran DLC dungeons you'll be fine with that stuff if you're going into veteran hard mode trials or veteran DLC trials you're gonna have to talk to your group anyway and see what they want you to wear and what, what you need uh, to buff the group in general but these are very good sets to start out with the off tank spec really that you could run if you wanted to is put Dragon Guard on the body So we got all the dragon stuff on the buddy now, 10 out of 5. And then, something really strange, put werewolf hide on the uh, on the jewelry and weapons. Werewolf hide is an overland set, I think. You can just buy it from the guild traders or farm it if you wanted to. And then you go with an also decisive werewolf hide sword with a reinforced health glyph werewolf werewolf hide shield and with a lightning staff because you're just going to be off tanking in this also an infused with a crusher I know this is not the right trait here but you want that infused as well and this will really lower your stats though so even with all your buffs up and everything your health will go down to 39k your stamina pool will go up to 20k though and your magic pool is going to stay at about the same. Your resistances are going to stay at about the same as well. But your max health will be a good six to 7,000 lower than with the other sets. So it's really there for, for off tanking. It's better as an off tank set when you run around with the stuff. And you don't need to face the big bosses. Say things like Clout Rest, when all you need to do is, as an off tank, go into the portal, tank Samaja for like a minute, and then go back up again, and you have nothing to do other than that. Because then this set plays in really well with the ultimate generation as well. It gives you 1k max health, 1k max stamina, and 124 weapon damage, which is not really important for us, but when you take damage, you generate 5 ultimates. So there's another one that gives you a lot of ultimate back and it also has a health and a stamina bonus so that's nice for tanks as well and that just allows you to spam even more colossuses or warhorns uh yeah but i would only wear that really if i was the off tank like and i didn't really have too much things to do you can probably get away with it in normal sunspire where the other tank is doing the dragons and you're just trying to keep an, an atronach busy or something like that or in Clout Rest, where all you have to do is go into the portal and tank Samaja for about a minute or so until they're done with the portal, and then you're just on top running around anyway and putting uh, debuffs on, on things and spamming your ultimate. Or maybe in Ethereum Archive, even when where there's not really anything to do for the tank much other than at the final boss take uh, the, the main boss and keep her taunted. It could work out well in these sets so it is definitely a set to have for a necromancer tank that's going for all in ultimate regeneration but the normal setup with dragon guard ebon and bloodspawn should be just doing fine because that's f uh, way enough for ultimate anyway 
All right, so much for that. Uh, skills, we got everything. Oh yeah, I'll quickly show you my CP. Got 72 into Ironclad, 10 Spell Shield, 49, 49 Hardy and Elemental Defender, and 48 in Thick Skinned. 32 in Quick Recovery and 10 in Heavy Armor Focus. 28 in Arlord, Warlord. I know it's a little bit, uh, could be a bit higher, but I prefer the Bashing Focus 10% and the Sprinter 6% because Necros are kind of slow by default. So I just get on better with this. If I was in a trial where I knew I'm going to have to break free a whole lot, I'd probably pump a little bit more points into this. I've got 56 in Tenacity because I need that stamina back because my stamina pool isn't too high, so I need to heavy attack once or twice to get a lot of stamina back then. Uh, obviously 75 into Arcanist because uh, most of our skills cost Magicka and they cost quite a lot of Magicka, so I really want the Magicka recovery to be high. And then I just put 11 points here into Mooncall for a little bit more stamina recovery. Then I've got 66 into Shadow War to reduce the cost of blocking and 9 points into uh, tumbling for the roll dodge and that brings us to 75 which gives you the treasure hunter passive meaning you'll get uh, better quality items out of chests all right we've got 51 into elfborn increasing our critical healing with magic abilities we've got 75 into blessed increasing our healing done by 14 percent two into s weapon x but physical weapon x was just because i didn't really know where else to put them they didn't wouldn't have made a difference in master at arms where i've got 20 points and then we've got 122 points in here, 66 in Thaumaturge and 56 in Precise Dryas because we want to get that last stand. Uh, passive, if our health falls below 20%, we gain Major Heroism, gen uh, granting us even more ultimate, 3 ultimate every 1.5 seconds for 8 seconds. So this is a very nice one, this is why I've put so many points in here, and also because we don't really need them anywhere else, to be honest. Good, good. So, I hope you figured out how that thing works. Uh, how you play it. I'm gonna put a gameplay video on as well showing you how to CC enemies effectively and how to spot things and how to play the, the build in general when you're tanking in, in dungeons and all. So look in the description, the gameplay video should be up shortly and uh, hopefully that'll uh, shine a little more light on how to exactly play this build. Other than that I hope you enjoy it, have a lot of fun tanking as a necromancer, it's a great class to tank on and have a good one. See ya!